one. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Real Talk. I am excited again to have Professor with me. He has become uh, almost a co-host for me because we've done so many videos. So I'm excited to have him with me today. Uh, we just have so many different conversations about really good topics that we just can't put them all into one video. So we just keep recording more. So I'm excited today because we're going to talk about education and learning, which is one of his books that he has written. But before we get into that, Professor, please introduce yourself because some people might not know who you are. Thanks for having me. And uh, first of all, I thank you for giving me this opportunity. I think this is the fourth time we are, uh, you are interviewing me. It's an honor to be interviewed by you. That's one thing. And uh, 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 this is the fourth round. We are going to talk about education and learning. Previously, we talked about mindfulness, gender, soft leadership, like that. This is the fourth uh, round of interview, which uh, having right now. Uh, this this uh, about education and learning. So let me start with, uh, 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 let me share with you the fact that uh, I was lucky to be alive uh, of the brain stroke in the year 2021. I survived because of my positive attitude, because of my willpower and the power of subconscious mind. And I was born in a toxic family and grew up into a toxic environment. I have mental challenges, physical challenges, and financial challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not giving up. Yes, one. My right hand was paralyzed. My right mm -hmm. uh, uh, shoulder and uh, uh, right hand is uh, numb. So I have so many challenges, but uh, still uh, people like you are encouraging me to uh, give more and more interviews. So I am grateful to you for this opportunity. And uh, uh, I have published 50 books. Mm -hmm. And one of the books uh, is about uh, uh, See the Light in You, for which his, his holiness Dalai Lama, the Nobel laureate has written four word. So now we are going to talk about a very uh, interesting book uh, titled Vision 2030, One Million Global Leaders. This is the book. Yes, okay. mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, right there in yeah, that little yeah. cup, honey. Yeah, uh, this is the book. Uh, let mm -hmm. me share it with you. Uh, so why I wrote this book, I would like to share with you. This book is close to me. Why? Because... I have four blogs. Uh, one of the blogs is about Vision 2030, 1 million global leaders. Mm -hmm. So I started this initiative. It's a non-profit initiative. Uh, and I started, so far I have trained more than 50,000 students as global leaders. It's a non-profit, despite having uh, financial challenges and, uh, and despite uh, not having proper uh, uh, regular employment. But I am passionate about sharing my knowledge. And I'm passionate about education and learning. So mm -hmm. uh, I have trained more than 50,000 students. But after coronavirus, things have changed. So it, uh, I started sharing online. And uh, for, for the last 15 years, I'm sharing my knowledge mm -hmm. online and offline. So I started sharing more on uh, uh, online uh, after the brainstorm, especially after the COVID-19. So things have changed and uh, we need to change with the changing uh, times and mm -hmm. the technologies. So we need to reinvent, uh, to reinvent. So I, I have also reinvented myself and that too because of the health issues uh, I reinvented. So I am, uh, I started sharing my knowledge and I have two YouTube channels and mm -hmm. four blogs and uh, I am very, I have my own presence globally. As Professor MS Rao and I am available on LinkedIn. Yes, uh -huh. and various other social media platforms. This is briefly about uh, the book. Now, coming to the book, this book, Vision 2030, One Million Global Leaders, uh -huh. uh, this uh, uh, Dr. Kiran Bedi, the first woman IPS officer from India, uh, has written a foreword for this book. That is the nucleus of the book. And secondly, this book I have dedicated to uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, because I admire him a lot. This book is dedicated to uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, former president of India, a great scientist and humanist, and also to one million global leaders. This is the dedication. Wow. So like this, I keep dedicating my books because uh, uh, I, I, I admire some of the great leaders. 
of course i basically abraham lincoln has been my inspiration and i have also some women leaders i admire like uh, rosa parks uh, uh, my angelo and oprah winfrey mm mm-hmm. mhm I love so that. Now, all, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Now, so, you know, my question is, you know, about education and learning. You know, a lot of times we get to places, like you said, global leaders, right? People who uh, have achieved a lot of things, but feel like, you know, what else is there to learn? So how do you keep that enthusiasm about learning? Because you know it seems like there's a certain level of mastery that we get to and we yeah. feel like we know it you know whether it's a parent or uh, a business leader how do you keep that um curiosity yeah it's a very uh, wonderful question uh, basically right from uh, childhood to till date uh, i'm passionate about education and learning mm-hmm. i'm a continuous learning I, 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 I am a continuous learner and uh, two uh, are the hallmarks of my personality that is uh, 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 this is continuous learning second is feedback these two are the basic hall, hallmarks of my personality that is I, I've been a continuous uh, uh, learner right from childhood to till date and I also take feedback whenever I I, I uh, regularly I take the feedback why because uh, feedback is very much required because we check ourselves where we are on the whether we are on the right track or the wrong track in case if we are wrong you know, we can take feedback and we can improve so these two are the basic hallmarks of my personal that is continuous learning and taking feedback and I, apart from that apart mm-hmm. from that i am an indian air force veteran so i was in military Mm-hmm. so i have some i have acquired certain basic qualities from uh, uh, indian air force like you know uh, waking up the, at the right time and sleeping at the right right time so like that you know i acquired some basic qualities when i was 18 years old mm-hmm. then i was into business then i got into teaching so uh, although i traveled to different areas like uh, uh, as uh, as a soldier then as a uh, entrepreneur then as a, a, a editor then as an author then uh, then uh, uh, then again a philosopher like this in different uh, uh, areas i uh, entered so what i have learned from all these things is that i am passionate about education and learning and uh, uh, the basic qualities helped me to come up to this level despite being a dyslexic despite with adhd attention mm-hmm. deficit hyperactivity disorder despite uh, uh, mm-hmm. being born, born in a toxic uh, family a toxic environment so these are all the things that uh, draw me to come up to this level i don't know where i will mm-hmm. go to the next level but definitely i'll keep going in that uh, area not only now in the in the near future i love that now so you know i love that you said you can receive feedback So for some people, you know, um they don't know how to do that. You know, so what is a simple way that you can help us who may be watching, you know, to kind of understand the real value with feedback. It's a very good question. Uh, so feedback is very much required and we need to take uh, feedback. And uh, sometimes people uh, uh, don't appreciate feedback sometimes they uh, criticism is something which is also required for us and uh, but people most of the people uh, they they don't appreciate it when someone criticizes but i take even criticism in a positive way because it's uh, the area where we where i am lacking so i need to improve so when someone criticizes i don't mind that is something is uh, uh, something which is bothering me so i need to improve up that's what i think but unless if the feedback is adverse or if the criticism is very ruthless you know then we should avoid uh, uh, this excessive criticism so we should to take uh, mm-hmm. uh, criticism in a positive sense that's what i i believe and secondly uh, when we talk about feedback you attack the uh, issue not the individual 
what people do, you know, they attack the individual. It's a wrong thing. Attack the issue. If any issue is there, attack the issue, not the individual. So, in that way, what happens? People won't uh, mind about, uh, they, they won't feel bad about uh, criticism. So, we should take uh, intrapersonal feedback within ourselves uh, and uh, we should not be excessively worried about uh, unwanted criticism or excessive criticism. Some someone attacks, you know. Then in that case, we should uh, you should ignore those things. So it all depends on how you take it. You take it in a positive sense. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, you must take interpersonal feedback. And if it if the, if the criticism is excessive, just ignore it. And because if it, it, it will go toxic, okay, it will adversely it will adversely affect uh, your personality, uh, behavior, whatever it is. So we should take it in a positive way, and uh, we should attack only the issue, not the individual. I love that. You know, and that is def definitely a mindset that is uh, unlike a lot of people. You know, um, we kind of feel like. If someone gives us feedback, that's a sign that we're not enough or we did something wrong or something is wrong with us. So I love how you have that mindset. So talk to us about, you know, you have written 50 books um, and you're constantly learning and getting feedback and these things like that, especially now, you know, with the videos about going through your journey of recovery. So for somebody who feels like, you know, they don't have anything to write about, you know, they're thinking, you know, there's nothing that I really can give of value in a book. Uh, talk to that person to um, let them know, you know, what is something that they could begin to start writing about? Uh, you mean to say you're uh, talking about the books or what? I I'm not clear. Could you repeat that question? So, like, you know, your whole journey, you've written a lot of published books, 50 of them. Yeah. So for somebody who is feeling like, I don't even have anything to write about, you know, my life is not interesting or whatever, what encouragement would you give them about, you know, just getting started with a book? See, first of all, writing a book is something, a passion for me. It's mm -hmm. not a profession. I want to make it very clear. Mm -hmm. It's a passion, not a profession. It's in the, when I write a book, you know, I'm passionate about writing. Mm -hmm. It's not a profession. Profession means something you make money and go away. But for me, it's a passion. Writing books is a passion. Mm -hmm. So I write books. Okay. That's one thing. Uh, now, about this, you know, then uh, oh, sometimes people, uh, while writing books, you know, they may have writer's block. Mm hmm uh, sometimes you know sometimes they can't write because they have that writer's uh, block we call it as so uh, some some of the people they are having that writer's block so uh, i don't have that because i have my mind is always flooded with uh, full full of ideas and you would uh, uh, it's it's very surprising that uh, 50 books i have other 10 books are still in the pipeline mm -hmm. because of the health issues is uh, I was not able to write because I, I am not able to type with my right hand. So mm -hmm. since the passion, because of the passion, you know, that has driven me to write books. And I keep doing it because I keep doing it in the future also. And I will recover very fast and I will type and I will uh, write books. And also I want to write a book uh, uh, about, uh, uh, about my journey. Uh, like either it may be a memoir or uh, my autobiography. Auto, art, autobiography means uh, mm -hmm. that's a very long, long process. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to write a memoir. Uh, some of the some of the leaders like Michelle Obama, uh, she mm -hmm. wrote a memoir. And then again, Barack Obama, he wrote a mm -hmm. memoir. Like that, you know, it all depends upon the people. So when you want to write books, you know, you need to have a passion. If you are not passionate about writing, don't write books. That's what my sincerity is. I love that. So this is this is amazing, you know. And uh, I guess the last question I would ask is, how did you tap into that passion? Passion is something it can't be defined. <laughs> mm -hmm. It can't be defined. Passion is something. 
factors in born uh, that keeps coming automatically mm. you won't believe when i was in childhood uh, i wanted to write so there was no um, uh, paper so what i used to have a pen i used to write on my hand mm. because i have that the habit of writing even if uh, uh, there is a, because i am telling in childhood when there was no paper pen was there so what i used to do i used to write on hand you would believe but later on i i, I was thinking something wrong with me the letter i thought that uh, then i realized that i recognized or realized what is that i was passionate about writing right from childhood. i love that but i i discovered that passion later <coughs> sorry i discovered my passion later that mm-hmm. it was not a disease people think you know, it's it was a disease i was thinking it was a disease it was not a disease mm-hmm. it was passion something my my mind was flooding my mind was flooding with ideas mm-hmm. so my mind was always flooded and even if there was no i had only pen but there was no paper to write so i used to write in childhood i love that you know because um you know to me for somebody who has that gift or passion they see every opportunity to get out what they need to get out you know so writing on pen uh writing on themselves writing on the wall <laughs> i mean you, seriously you know what i mean because you know you see it as a way to express yourself whereas other people may see it as something else but you're finding the alternative vehicles that you could use to share your message and i think that is wonderful so that is awesome so okay, um let, let let me share one more let me share one more uh, thing is that as in many others uh, uh they hire some people they mm-hmm. get their books written mm-hmm. that they are not passionate about writing mm-hmm. but they are great leaders entrepreneurs and uh, they have money resources mm-hmm. but they can't write mm-hmm. okay but in my case i am passionate about writing but i don't have money so life is like that some people will have some uh, uh, merits some people some people have some people have demerits like advantages mm-hmm. disadvantages so every person has got some advantages every person has uh, some disadvantages so some of the great entrepreneurs they can write books so they hire someone and they mm-hmm. uh, publish they they are someone to write and they edit uh, then publish because they they want to have a brand they want to have an identity they want to be remembered because of that reason you know they hire people they throw money and mm-hmm. they get it written and uh, publish that's what they do it that's all. some of the biographers you know uh, they i don't like to name them right now uh, mm-hmm. they write uh, for somebody they are biographers like i i don't remember who is it whether steve steve jobs uh, i think mm-hmm. biographer i don't remember his name so they they write uh, biographies of some great leaders like mm-hmm. Steve Jobs like likewise mhm mm-hmm. love that you know this has just been a wonderful conversation and every time we have a conversation i learn something new so i'm over here <laughs> taking notes i love it so share with us any final thoughts that you have today my thoughts are very clear i believe in education and learning mm-hmm. this book is a uh, very important uh, because uh, i i love my students i am mm-hmm. passionate about education and learning so uh, i have dedicated some of my books to my students mm-hmm. and my vision is to build 1 million schools as globally respect 2030 i don't know whether to, whether i will be able to accomplish this uh, vision or not because of the health issues and uh, after covid 19 things have changed but i am very much keen that i'll be able to build one million schools global leaders by 2030 mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the message uh, from this uh, book is that uh, achieve success with integrity that is the mm-hmm. message i can give to everyone is that because some some some, some people they cut their corners ca- it's a wrong thing you can be ambitious but you should not be over ambitious one mm-hmm. you should be ambitious but you should not be over ambitious so some people they cut their corners uh, they do wrong things so that is a wrong thing so what you should do is achieve success with 
integrity. That is the message mm -hmm. from this book. I love that. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, so what's the best way for everybody to get a hold of you? Uh, my books are available on Amazon. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I don't remember. I have got around 16 reviews uh, for this book. If they, go, they Google my name, Vision 2031 Million Global Leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, they can purchase. Uh, they can buy. Uh, they can purchase a copy of this book. And I have got sixteen review, uh, review uh, reviews. I don't recall right now. So I got a uh, very good number of uh, reviews. Five out of five, I have got. So the book is uh, good. It's an award-winning book, and uh, I'm sure uh, uh, I'll I'll uh, I, I'm sure I'll be able to uh, accomplish my vision to build one million students as a global respect twenty thirty. And uh, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. You are so welcome. And we thank you all for watching with us today. And we will see you all on the next episode. Bye for now.